exploring Vietnam, what you need to know for a 30 day stay. Hey folks, welcome back to my channel, My Road to Thailand. Today we're diving into one of Southeast Asia's most exciting destinations, Vietnam. Whether you're thinking of traveling long term or just for 30 days, Vietnam has a lot to offer. So let's break it down, the cost of living, accommodations, food options, and the best times to visit. There it goes. Yeah. Did you get it? Yes. This, of course, is the world famous Dragon Bridge in Da Nang, Vietnam. And I'm going to just say right here boots on the ground. Nothing looks better than seeing something with your own eyes as opposed to whatever kind of camera you have capturing the moments. Boots on the ground is the best way to experience anything, not just Asia. Vietnam offers a unique blend of natural beauty, rich culture, and vibrant cities. From the bustling streets of Hanoi to peaceful countryside and all the way to the stunning beaches of Da Nang, there's something for everyone. If you're an adventurer, a history buff, or a foodie, Vietnam won't disappoint. Plus, it's one of the more budget-friendly destinations in Asia. The cost of living for 30 days in Vietnam. I chose 30 days simply because Canadians need a visa to go to Vietnam for 30 days, not just your passport. Turns out my Thai wife didn't need a visa. She could come to Thai, or sorry, Vietnam on her passport for 30 days. I'm not 100% sure where you're watching this from, so you'll want to check with your uh, local government to find out what is required for you to travel to Vietnam. There's actually a pretty handy tool on uh, line. You just Google whatever country you're from and say, does a, for example, U.S. citizen require a visa to travel to Vietnam? And then it'll bring up a website that'll tell you all the places where you need it or don't. Living costs in Vietnam can vary depending on where you stay, but overall it's quite affordable. Let's break it down. Number one, uh, accommodations, high versus low budget, high-end hotels, luxury stays, so on and so forth. If you want more luxurious experience, expect to pay around $50 to $200 per night for high-end hotels. These usually come with air conditioning, pools, gyms, and a lot of times they often include breakfast as well. In cities like Ho Chi Minh City, otherwise known as formerly known as Saigon or Hanoi, you can find international chains that offer high-end experiences. For a 30-day stay, you're looking at around 1,500 to 6,000 USD for the high-end accommodations. Mid-range would be a guest house breakfast as well. In cities like Ho Chi Minh City, otherwise known as formerly known as Saigon or Hanoi, you can find international chains that offer high-end experiences. For a 30-day stay, you're looking at around 1,500 to 6,000 USD for the high-end accommodations. Mid-range would be a guest house or boutique hotels. Mid-range stays in Vietnam like guest house or boutique boutique hotels, and it's easier said than done, will set you back about $20 to $50 a night. These places are usually quite charming, often with local designs and modern amenities like air conditioning and Wi-Fi. For 30 days, this will cost you around $600 to $1,500 U.S.
don't let the waves fool you. The water is quite shallow. You can walk out pretty far. And um, it's always bathtub warm, which is phenomenal. That's the Lady Buddha way over there. We went there the first full day. First Budget full day stays, over. for example, simple guest house or hostels. These would be considered on the low end. If you're a backpacker or on a very tight budget, you can find hostels or simple guest house for as low as $5 to $15 per night. You may not always get air conditioning, but you will have a fan, a bed, and basic facilities. Usually a hostel is a scenario where you're going to be sharing bathroom. 30 days at this price range would be roughly $150 to $450, and of course that's U.S. funds. With or without air conditioning, air conditioning is often a luxury is often a luxury in budget accommodation in hostels or low end guest house. You might pay extra three or five bucks per night for a room with AC. Uh, without it, expect only fans, which might be uncomfortable in Vietnam's heat. Now let's talk a little bit about food, street food versus restaurants. Vietnam is a food lover's paradise with something for every taste. You can go all out in restaurants or keep it cheap with delicious street foods. Vietnam street food is famous worldwide for a good reason. And I'm about to butcher some names here, but forgive me in advance, but a bowl of fowl, pho, spelled P-H-O, it's noodle soup, or they have a Vietnamese sandwich called uh, Ban Mai, or a plate of Com Tam, which is broken rice, can cost as little as a dollar to three dollars. The quality and flavor are often as good, if not better, than restaurants. If you eat food, street food, for every meal, you could easily spend three to ten dollars per day, totaling about ninety to three hundred dollars for thirty days. Restaurants vary in prices. In local casual spots, you might spend three to seven dollars per meal, but if you're dining in more upscale or western style restaurants, you could pay anywhere from ten to twenty dollars per meal. Budgeting for restaurants would bring your daily food costs to about $15 to $50 or $450 to $1,500 per month for the month. If you combine both street food and dine-in restaurants, that's giving you the taste of both worlds. The best time to visit Vietnam? Vietnam's climate can be a bit tricky because it spans three regions, north, central, and south, and each has its own weather, pa weather patterns. North Vietnam, Hanoi, Ha Long Bay, which is where we actually spent our honeymoon, was February 2020. Um, ha Hanoi and uh, took a cruise at Ha Long Bay was absolutely stunning. The best time to visit is from October to April when it's cooler and less humid. May to September can be very hot and rainy. Getting back to our honeymoon in February of 2020, it was kind of overcast every day. We were there up north for a week and it was kind of overcast, just light jacket weather, but it was still fine. I think it only rained once. Anyway, Central Vietnam is where we've spent most of our time. We've been to Vietnam five or six times now. I've lost count. Uh, da Nang and Hanoi. Or no, I said Hanoi. I meant Hoi An. Um, it's just a little bit south of Da Nang, but it's absolutely beautiful. The weather from February to May is ideal. The weather is warm. There's less rain. Though September through December can bring heavy rains, even typhoons. And we like we, every time we've been to Vietnam, it's only been in February, and the weather has always been fantastic. Except as I mentioned previously, up in Hanoi was 
overcast all the, the whole week we were there and um, a little bit on the cool side. South Vietnam, uh, Ho Chi Minh City and the Mekong Delta, that we spent one week in and that was actually the very first time we went to Vietnam. We spent one week there in also in February and uh, it was actually quite nice. Uh, I don't know why I was surprised, but it was really nice. Weather was fantastic. And um, November to April is the dry season with pleasant temperatures. May to October is the rainy season, but it's still warm year-round. So if you're planning a 30-day trip to uh, test the waters to see what Vietnam is uh, really like, First of all, I highly recommend it. I love the country. It's absolutely stunning. November to April is your best bet to enjoy the whole country without worrying about extreme weather conditions. You'll also avoid the hottest months, making sightseeing more comfortable. Some of the things that are must-see destinations, uh, Hanoi is the capital of Vietnam. It's known for its old quarter, vibrant street life, historical landmarks like, for example, Ho Chi Minh's mausoleum. Halong Bay, as I mentioned earlier, is where we went on our honeymoon cruise. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site famous for its emerald waters and towering limestone islands. You can take a cruise, kayak, or explore caves there. Hoi An, which is again just south of Da Nang, a charming ancient town known for its well-preserved architecture, tailored shops, and peaceful atmosphere. The owner of the Airbnb we stayed at uh, took us there. It's only a little bit of a drive from Da Nang, so I've only been there once, but it was well worth the visit. They took us to a restaurant, which was fa fabulous, the food was awesome, and uh, then we walked around for hours. It's a charming ancient town, like I said. And Da Nang, which is where we've spent most of our time when we've been to Vietnam, because I love the beach. And if you love beaches, this is the spot. Da Nang has beautiful stretches of sand and is also home to the famous Marble Mountain, which I also have a video just on that alone. I'll link to that video below. And of course the Dragon Bridge which has also been featured in this video. Ho Chi Minh City is Vietnam's bustling dynamic economic hub. It's where you'll find amazing food, great nightlife and historical sites like the War Remnants Museum which I did visit and it was an eye-opening experience. Also the Coochie Tunnels, Coochie Tunnels I believe it's pronounced. I didn't, we didn't tour that but I did take a look at it in the brochure and uh, because I'm not a fan of confined spaces uh, I didn't want to do it but it definitely opened my eyes up to why um, Vietnam was such a formidable foe. I don't know what else to say other than that. Transportation costs, taxis and ride sharing. Be sure to download the Grab app for sure. Uh, that's Vietnam's version of Uber. It is widely used and very affordable and a short ride might cost anywhere from two to five dollars. You can also use local taxis but always ensure they use the meter. Just because you see the meter when you get into the taxi, it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to use it. If they don't, be prepared to pay a hefty price. Public buses in the cities are super cheap and for getting around. Then they cost as little as $0.30 cents to $1 a ride. Trains and long-distance buses, if you're moving between cities, overnight buses or trains are very popular budget option. Train tickets for an overnight sleeper can range from $20 to $40 depending on the distance. My conclusion, Vietnam is worth every penny. 
it's probably why we keep going back to it. And I did forget to mention last February, we actually stayed for the month of February in Natrang. And I'm probably butchering that name as well. I'm a terrible reader, uh, especially with the words I'm not used to. So Natrang is uh, also a beach uh, area. And uh, it was nice, uh, really nice. But uh, if I had to weigh the, the differences between Da Nang and Natrang, I would say I like Da Nang better. That's my personal opinion. Um, so whether you're on a tight budget or looking for a little bit of luxury, Vietnam is an incredible destination that offers unbeatable value for your money. The diverse culture, the rich history, the delicious food make it an ideal spot for anyone, no matter what your travel style. So if you've been on the fence about visiting, hopefully this breakdown helps you make your decision. A 30-day tour of Vietnam could be one of the most memorable experiences you'll ever have, and it won't break the bank. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up and a subscribe would be awesome as well. By the way, when I started recording this video, it was actually going to be a comparison between Vietnam and Thailand because we go to both countries every year, except for the 22 months during COVID. But it would turn out to be so long that I'm dividing it in half. So this would be part one, uh, you know, basically what to expect when you go to Vietnam. And I'm going to do a part two video of Thailand, where I do spend the majority of my time when I do leave Canada, just because my wife is from there. And um, yeah, we spend more time in Thailand than Vietnam, but love both countries. All right. Thanks again for watching.